Hi there, this is Jason from English Raven, and this is my next um, Teaching Materials Design Masterclass. Uh, this is the second installment. Um, what I'm going to look at here is fairly simple but also very important, just like with the header and footer business that I covered in the previous tutorial. Um, this is all about sort of getting set up and, and those sort of foundation things for your materials. Now, um, what I'm going to show you how to do is to make a, what I call a practical background for your document. Um, we've already got a header, we've already got a footer. Look, you may not even need a background. You may like to just go ahead and, and put your material into that um, into that document in the white space there. That's fine. You've already made it look a little bit nicer with, with a nice header and footer. Um, but sometimes what you do with the background can... Um, be really good for how the material ends up but also how it's used. So I'm going to give you a quick example of that. Um, now I've set up a document here um, for reading materials. So, uh, you know, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm doing something along the lines of material for reading skills. Um, so I've sort of I've just adapted that basic template that I showed you uh, in the previous tutorial. Now what we want to do for our background is to keep things simple again but um, to make it look a little bit nicer but also look the point of a good background is to set up how you're going to display your material and draw the learners eyes to different parts of the page um, whether it's up on a screen or whether it's uh, something that's photocopied and handed out so um, I've gone back into my header and footer again remember all you need to do is double click to go into the background of your of your document. Um, we've got our header and footer there, we've got this idea of reading. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something with this space here. Now the way to do that is to go to our insert button again and you'll see me doing this time and time again. I go back to shapes and I choose a square. Okay. Now what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to put this in the middle of the space, not actually in the header or the footer. Um, it's, it's We're in the header or footer screen but um, we're going to do something with this um, in terms of you know uh, the background itself which is part of the header and footer when you go into this screen. Now I've put this box here now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill it with a simple grey colour okay um, say like that. Um, I could make it even lighter but if I make it that light um, it certainly wouldn't turn up in a photocopy. What I'll do for the just for the purposes of this one is make it that grey, okay? And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to send it to the back. There's this option up here in in the menu in Microsoft Word to send it to the back, okay? Now all I have to do is stretch it right across so it goes off the page. Stretch it right across so it goes off the page. Okay, now my footer now is a little bit hard to see, so what I'm actually going to do is make that a little bit darker. Okay, now you know this is looking very grey, isn't it? You know, it's looking a bit bleak. Um, but look what we do with this um, with this background now. Um, this is the background. Look, one of the worst things you could do with a background is put some sort of picture there or you know like what a, a watermark you know with some sort of detailed picture in the background that is one of the worst things you can do with your materials because it is so distracting and it makes your content so hard to read um, I really don't recommend that you actually put anything bright or anything uh, detailed into the background um, I tend to prefer very light shades of grey or very light shades of other colours um, in this case I'm going to use grey, it's one of the most neutral colours but then whatever we put into the document, whatever we do with the document from now on, it allows things to stand out more. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Um, I'm going to go back to insert again. I'm going to now choose the, um, the rounded rectangle option and I'm going to do this. Okay. All right. Now, can you see how vividly that stands out against the background now? Um, now, I don't want it to be that curvy, so I'm just going to... Now, why did I choose a rounded rectangle, you might be thinking? You know, why not just a square? Um, especially with the larger objects on your, um, 
on your document. Um, it's good to have curves in there rather than edges. Straight up square edges can look very sharp, very blocky. Whereas when you use something that's curved, it has a smoother feel to it. It has a gentler feel to it, gentler on the eye. It doesn't feel like it's sort of been uh, knifed into the document. It looks more like it's sort of sliding there. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that outline. I'm just going to um, change the outline to white. All right. And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to slide that off there. Okay. I'm going to pull this across to about the middle. Now, what have we done now? What what have we done with this background? We now have a, a very uh, vivid white section where we could perhaps um, put in a reading text or put in a dialogue or something like that. And that's sort of like the main emphasis of the lesson, the main content or input. And then over here on this very light gray background, we could perhaps put in our comprehension questions, um, you know, word matching, uh, skill, skill based questions, comprehension, that sort of thing. And then the text, the reading text itself will really stand out here. And then, you know, the comprehension stuff will be at, you know, appropriately enough, I think, um, an addition that is um, is not going to stand out quite as much as the main text. All right, now that's a really simple thing I just did. Then I just put a very light grey background in, and then a white curved square in, and I've halved my document here, um, and I've given myself a framework within which to put my reading passage, and if I then um, go out of the header and footer, um, I can then go back in and put a text square in here, okay, and then write in my text. Um, yes, I might just have to do something here to go back into my, uh, to go back into my main screen like that. Yes. And then what I would do is once I'm finished formatting all this, I would then go back into my header and pull that, that gray down so that it fills it up again. You know, another nifty thing you could do is actually leave it like that and have uh, something like that. Um, there's all sorts of cool little dynamic shapes you can create with your background. Um, but then what I could do is I could plug in my, plug in my main input text here, have a look at the print preview. Um, you know, it's just that dynamic. It makes it look that much more professional, but it also does that subtle thing of moving the eyes around the page and highlighting some things over other things. Um, another thing we might like to do is to, um, if I go back into the header and footer, um, I might like to um, put it on this side. Let's say I'm going to make... Um, a reading passage again say or it could be anything it could be a dialogue or whatever um, now if I make my uh, background look like that what I could do is put photographs here or visual input and then put a reading text here or comprehension questions or discussion questions whatever it is you'd like to do um, and that creates a, a nice little division of the page as well so I'll show you what I mean if I go out of there go back into my main page. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll put some photographs on the side here. Um, I'll insert a picture and we'll start with say this one. I'm going to insert this picture. Alright, just bear with me while I get it ready. And then I'm going to resize it. That's a pretty big file here, so sorry, it's it's gone a bit, a bit slow and a bit blocky. Okay, and I'm just going to give that a picture effect, uh, something like that. Okay, um, move it down like that. Slide it up a bit. Okay. And then I'll choose another picture, or I'll insert a picture from the same place. This is uh, this might be something that I do on the theme of time. Okay. And resize that. Look, I've got a big, nice, big sundial there, and I've got uh, a grandfather clock being wound up. Um, 
make that like that as well. But we'll give it a bit of a twist so that it's more like that. Okay, this is a whole other skill we're looking at here in terms of how you use pictures and how you layer them and, and work them, but anyway. Okay, now that's not perfect, that's not m maybe how I would do it um, if I was to be working on this, but I'll now go back into my header and footer. It's just taking a bit of time because those pictures are quite big files. I probably should have chosen smaller files while the screen casting uh, tool is going. It's just going to think about it for a moment. Okay, I've um, I've overloaded Microsoft Word here, as you can see, and it's not responding because we've got the screencaster going, and that's using up a fair bit of the computer's <laughs> time and effort. Um, go back in there. Now we're now we're in business. Now I'm just going to pull this grey back underneath it again, like that, and I'm, I could either slide that all the way under now, or I can pull it off to the side. Now. This isn't perfect, this isn't probably the way I would do it, I would work with these pictures a little bit more. But what we have now, what we effectively have now, is um, some picture input, and then we could put the text next to that, and the text is highlighted, you know, it's got, its, it's, it's, it's got that broad white space there. So, um, you know, that's something to think about in terms of your background usage. Just the matter of actually putting a, a background color in and then this curved box just to manipulate the space basically um, and that can be a really good thing to do. Yes, I've really upset Microsoft Word with the size of those pictures. They're a couple of meg each. But um, in, terms of <laughs> in terms of our print preview, as you can see here, um, we would have a couple of pictures and then we would have a text or we would have discussion questions or whatever whatever we were going to do with that theme. But you can see it already looks a lot, lot better um, in terms of um, just a, a smooth interface showing different sides of the material. Um, and that's basically what I recommend you think about with your backgrounds is simple stuff. I'll get rid of these, that might speed things up a bit. But those simple little things you can do just to um, create the different areas of your page and highlight some things over other things. And it, and it, it looks very, very simple, but when you put the content in, um, it gives you some really nice options in terms of moving the eye around, keeping the eye and the attention settled in one part of the document. So that's that's something I recommend for your, um, your basic backgrounds is just a a basic color and then a white box that you can move on either side of the page you know you could do this in various ways you could have other ones that come in here but try to keep things simple with your backgrounds try to keep them you know not don't get too busy with the background because otherwise it will really detract from the content that you intend to put in later so that's a, a quick idea of uh, one way you might like to think about using your backgrounds I hope it's given you some ideas this is Jason from English Raven and thanks for tuning in.